Hello class and uh, YouTube. Um, today I'm going to cover uh, elevator trim stalls with you. Uh, we'll cover what it is on the ground and uh, like always we'll go uh, actually try it out and have some real fun up in the air. Um, so our objective, um, we're our goal today is to uh, understand when, where, and how elevator trim stalls are going to occur and um, how to uh, prevent them from happening and also how to recover from them. So what it is, um, the main point of it is to show what could happen during a go around situation. So go around is um, when this will happen, most likely to happen. Um, it happens when you're coming into land and then you're adding just full power and uh, you just have too much nose up, tr nose up trim already inputted into the aircraft. So the aircraft's just gonna wanna aggressively pitch back up. Oops. Um, so why we do this? Um, we perform this maneuver to show the importance of just making smooth power inputs. We don't wanna be too aggressive with our power. Um, we want to uh, be able to overcome strong trim forces. Um, best way to prevent it is uh, be aware of your trim situation. You don't want to be too trimmed out one way or the other. But um, if needed, we just need to muscle this thing out. Um, we just fight the trim just to uh, keep ourselves alive. Um, but we also want to, uh, what it does, um, just makes us more aware of uh, why we use or why we uh, strive for uh, safe flight attitudes during all phases of our flight. So uh, to understand uh, the elevator trim stall, we must understand the stall, of course, first. So what it is, uh, any airspeed, any altitude, any power setting, but only when the critical angle of attack is exceeded. Um, so not stalled, you see the relative wind, uh, no disruption there. Uh, here, stalled, uh, we're at 62 degrees up of uh, angle of attack, and the airflow is being disrupted on the back side of the wing there. So if you think of that, uh, could be our aileron, no aileron um, effectiveness. And then uh, just one degree more, um, complete stall. Our wing is no longer flying airflow is no longer going over the wing uniformly and uh, the wing is no longer creating lift. Um, we want to be aware of uh, stall speed and uh, factors that affect it. Um, our, it uh, our configuration, our weight, our center of gravity, our load factor, bank angle, ice, and turbulence are all going to affect our uh, stall speed when we're going to feel this at what airspeed. Uh, so this is what the elevator trim stall looks like. Um, but first um, and foremost, we want to get set up for uh, the maneuver. So uh, scratch checklist, uh, safe landing area, clean, clearing turns, altitude, airspeed. Oh, misspelled that one. Uh, safe landing area, clearing turns, radios, altitude, airspeed, um, gums checklist. So. Uh, gas, uh, pulse tank, undercarriage mixture, propeller, switches, so we want to get our fuel pump on if it's off, um, and any other switches that need to be on during a, uh, during a maneuver. Um, so we want to select an altitude um, to allow us to recover, recover uh, no lower than 1,500 feet, feet AGL, uh, like all maneuvers. Um, we want to be high enough uh, in case anything wrong happens that we can uh, recover before the ground, of course. Um, so what elevator trim stall is gonna be uh, simulating, like I said before, is a go around situation. So uh, we're gonna be in a landing configuration on this. We're gonna have first notch of flaps in, and we're gonna be coming in um, at a 60 uh, knot um, approach speed. Um, I always forget it, so uh, bug your heading. Um, you want to bug your heading, that's part of the standards, is to uh, maintain a certain heading this way, or this way, a certain degree this way or that way. Um, so this is what it's going to look like. Like I said, 
Uh, we're going to be uh, configured for landing. Um, we want to be established on normal glide speed, 60 degrees. Uh, we want to be, uh, and then eventually, at some point, we're going to be coming in and uh, we're going to aggressively put in some nose up, out, uh, nose up trim just to feel what it, feel what it's going to uh, feel like in the most, most aggressive way. Um, so we get a full nose up trim. We're not going to feel anything at first, but where we really feel it is when we add full power. We are simulating a go around, so I think that we're, uh, we just got a bunch of nose in trim. We're coming in to land. We're above the numbers and uh, a cat runs across the uh, runway right where you're about to land. Um, so full power. Um, and then this is where the aircraft is going to just pitch up aggressively because the introduction of power um, and all that trim put in there. Um, but what we're going to do um, is we're going to allow that nose to nose to rise. Um, and then prior to the full stall, we're going to apply a forward pressure um, to eliminate the stall warning. So we'll get it to the stall warning, but uh, we're not going to take it to a full stall on this one. Um, and then uh, we'll just establish a normal climb attitude and uh, then we'll retrim and uh, return to the desired flight path. Um, part of this recovery, right about here, um, I did miss this part, so I'm going to backtrack just a little bit. But um, what we're doing is we're uh, allowing the nose to rise um, and we're just going to be fighting the, fighting the trim. During this, we're trying to avoid hit the ground, so we don't want to be messing with the little buttons on top of our stick there. Um, we're just, you know, muscle that sucker and just try to get out of the situation and then we can reach him um, right about here when we're uh, at a higher altitude and a uh, higher airspeed. So uh, here's my references. Um, I recommend uh, checking out the Airplane Flying Handbook um, to read more into this um, if you feel like you need to or um, just for fun. And then um, there's a link to ACS standards and uh, PTS standards um, for us uh, flight instructor wannabes.